Postal here. So today we're taking out uh, the P47B. This is actually a video from a while ago, uh, which you'll probably hear as a theme over the next few weeks. I've actually got an idea, um, but we'll talk about that another time. So, what is the P47B? Well, besides, besides being a completely iconic American plane, um, incredibly important to uh, in the United States' World War II effort, it is seen as a very mediocre um, plane in this game. And plane line, to be honest. Tier 6 through Tier 8 are some of the uh, least liked planes in this game. Um, what is it, though? Uh, tier 6, this is a P-47B. You are a multi-role fighter. You've got bombs, you've got rockets. Reload relatively quickly. You have eight 50 cal machine guns on the front of this. you got a decent amount of speed. Well, I mean, all that sounds pretty good, right? I'm not making it sound like it's a bad plane. And honestly, a tier 6, it, it, it's a pretty good plane. Um, however... At tier 6, there's a lot of pretty good planes to great planes. A plane like this struggles because of its man maneuverability. Its lack of maneuverability. Um, it's pretty good on the speed. But it's not such great speed that it really separates itself. Uh, at least not in a timely manner. Um, what you want to do in this plane is you still want to focus on the speed because you're never going to be really turny. But you need to be mindful of what's going on on the map. You need to be mindful of what you're fighting against. Your eight 50 cal machine guns can certainly do some damage, but you need to attack aircraft that will basically allow you to stick with them. You're going to notice that I'm going to try to um, attack as many heavy aircraft as I possibly can, attack as many poor maneuverability aircraft as I possibly can, um, kind of aim for low hit point um, targets because my guns will do a decent amount of damage um, in, you know, short bursts. To do a lot of damage, you need to stay on the target for a long time. Okay, I'm working together with this heavy fighter. We can actually do some damage to this bomber. Even with working together with this uh, other airplane, it took, it took quite a while there, right? So there is some flexibility at tier 6. Um, there, there's not a huge separation in the planes as you get higher and higher up. Uh, for instance, the tier 8 XP-72, there's some planes that are just so turny and there's just nothing you can do about it. In a pinch, the P-47 can kind of sort of stick with some planes. Um, but sometimes not. I've got my wing knocked out there. Let's see what we can do against the Spitfire. Luckily not paying attention, and even more luckily turning away from us. So we're going to be kind of stuck in right here. We're near their spawn point. It's not really where I want to be. Um, let's see if we can kind of boost away here. Uh, not so much. Trying to see if we can outturn this guy. Don't know if I hit F7 in this particular battle. It would have been smart. Getting my engine knocked out. No es bueno. Are we going to be able to survive? No. I'm going to actually try to drop a bomb here, maybe? No. Maybe. Can I bomb drop this guy? I am trying to bomb drop this guy. <laughs> Sounds like something I would try to do. Kitten's going crazy here. And I die anyway. Um... And yeah, you can just see in these type of situations, you've got to be mindful of what's going on around you, because if you get yourself stuck in, you just wasted a bunch of time. Um, we've still got one sector. They've got the other four sectors. Not really a good uh, start to this game for the team. Pretty good start for my own personal points. I think I'm about 10,000 personal points already, which is pretty darn nice. Let's see what we can do to... Um, get our attack on. Unfortunately, dropped our bombs there and didn't kill the guy behind us. Desperate uh, times, right? We still got some rockets, though, which is, a, again, just a great thing about this particular plane. You can see how the guns can be very frustrating in this situation. Keep in mind, the, um, 
pilot setup that I have on this plane and the fact that it's not specialized actually push this plane towards more of a air to ground type plane than an air to air plane. Um, this plane definitely can have a positive impact on the air. And you can see when, when you can get your guns on target, when you're going against something that's not overly maneuverable, you can do quite a bit of damage. Uh, my next steps on this plane are to get it specialized and probably go all in for speed and then slowly work on the um, the guns, the accuracy of the guns. I do like, even on planes like this, getting Marksman 2 just because that actually helps versus maneuvering targets. It helps your overall accuracy against maneuvering targets, which can be very helpful, especially in a plane like this. All right, so we've got three sectors, so there are two sectors, but it looks like we're going to be losing a um, military base, which we just did. This game is going a freaking wrong way. All right, so I'm using my speed to get away from the guy that's behind me. He's now turned away. This is the same uh, bot that killed me before. P40M102. Yeah, that's the name of it. Anyway, that's a really, really good tier 5 premium. Um, it's basically a P40 with the same speed and maneuverability, but can fire rockets. Seems pretty good to me. Um, speaking of rockets being fired. All right, excellent. So we've got this sector. We're now up three sectors to two. It's going to be a really, really close game. We need to push it and push it hard. All right, so squall line in 45 seconds. Let's try to get some planes knocked out. All right, we've, uh, Hurricane 2 is such a pain plane. Even though it's tier 5, it's got all those cannons that you wish you had on this plane. Four 20 millimeter cannons can really tear planes up, and it can outmaneuver me. Um, it certainly cannot outspeed or out altitude me, but the difference in altitude between this plane and any of the other multi rolls at this tier it's minimum. Yeah, you've got the highest altitude performance, but none of the multi rolls are particularly good in their altitude, so it's really not something to hang your hat on. The speed though is. And you'll notice my the amount of boost that I have if I let it save up is actually significant. Um, it's as high as a lot of the heavy fighters out there. Part of that is because of the pilot that I have on here, as we'll discuss when we get back to the hangar. Part of it is just because the boost in this plane and in this line is pretty significant anyway. All right, we've gone ahead and got ourselves a plane here. Oh, oh man. Get me up and over. Gonna try to gravity assist the turnover here. Get my guns on target quickly. Ugh. Oh man, this is gonna be like. Uh, not a fun engagement. Neither of us turn very well. It takes forever to freaking turn. This is just kinda. I can see the game slipping away. Trying to hit the air brakes and utilize the up and over to. Uh, come on get my guns on target where his guns won't be on target. Freaking geez, man. Oh, I think I'm dead here. I've got two planes on me. And uh, maybe even three planes. There's a bunch of planes around here. Using that boost. So what I'm doing is when I'm braking and doing up and over, I am um, saving my boost so that way when I need it for the over and around, I can use that extra boost. Come on. Oh my gosh, this engagement. This is, this is why you do not dogfight in a P-47. Um, oh, oh, it's, it's right there. I can taste it. Can you taste it? I can taste it. Here we go, finally. Got him. Uh, somehow our friendlies got the other military base, so we are now up four to one on sectors. And now we got a heavy fighter inbound. We are in so much trouble. Crud. We're dead, but I think we're gonna win this. Um, it's unfortunate, because no matter how good I do in this battle, no matter how many uh, personal points I snag, clearly, clearly I could have gotten more if I wasn't stuck in that one and one on engagement. Uh, but I like that engagement because it just reinforces the fact that P-47s are not meant for dogfighting. That was like, 
Ah, that hurts. Um, pretty good game, right? 18,000 personal points. Let's head on back. All right, so unfortunately, I don't have the end screen for that game. This game was actually from a couple months ago. I don't know why I didn't post it. Um, who knows? Um, but this is me trying to catch up on a lot of my recordings that I've got. I actually have a special pilot for this particular plane. This is Mary Loveheart. Um, she has some special, special skills. We'll go over those in just a second. Um, there's Mary right there. But let's take a quick look at the overall plane. So this is tier six, right? This plane coming down the one of two multi-roll lines for the Americans. I actually, even when I first went down this line, I, I liked this line up to tier six and then tier seven and tier eight really put a sour taste in my mouth, we'll say. Um, I honestly think, and I don't mean any offense to anybody out there, I honestly think that it's tier six is just a little bit easier to play. The bots are easier. Um, and a lot of people are still learning the game. So you're able to make mistakes, but they're typically balanced out by the enemy mistakes. I hope that makes sense without coming across as a dick. Um, this is probably why I felt okay in this plane when I was first playing the game, because I wasn't, you know, all that good at the game, uh, especially this type of plane when I was first, um, you know, going down this line. Uh, that being said, now I feel a lot more comfortable in this type of playstyle. This and the FW190 have similar playstyles, eh, similar and different because the guns are different. But um, yeah, what I really like about this plane is, well. Its guns aren't super strong, but you've got a ridiculous amount of them, right? You've got eight of them once you've upgraded the airframe. You have two 500-pound bombs. You have six uh, rockets. And, you know, so the combination of this just kind of allows you to do a little bit of everything, which I've really grown to love over the last year, year and a half or so, is my multi-rolls being able to do a little bit of everything. Don't get me wrong. I still love, you know, bat wings. I still love the J7Ws. Um... But they're they're more for air to air combat. Definitely the bat wings. They're really kind of um, I consider them more fighters than multi rolls, just because of their output. Something like the BV, um, excuse me, like the um, P forty seven here or the FW one nineties, the F eighty fours, things of that nature. The Hunter, they can do everything, and I and I quite like that. Um, that you can you can drop bombs if you need them, drop rockets if you need them shoot people in the butt if you need to, and, uh, you know, move along with your day. Again, I've got this plane fully upgraded. I'm working on getting it specialized. Because I've only got it specialized, the service is minimal. Um, you're not going to get a lot out of maneuverability on this plane, so I figured I'd go a little bit more in with the engine speed. I'm probably going to do even more and get the airframe. Once I get the airframe, I'm going to add polished skin. And for the outboard weapons, I'm going to take the items that help the speed. I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. That being said, consumables is something that I see. I see a lot of people just kind of automatically on their consumables go with the firefighter or fire extinguisher. I don't find that relevant across the board. In fact, more often than not, I'm going to recommend doing the first aid dressing package. And the reason being is because A... A lot of the planes don't catch on fire all that often. Um, B, the ones that do catch on fire, you should be using your skill points towards eliminating the, the ability of being set on fire. And that way, um, you're not having to use a consumable on fire extinguisher. You want to try to use first aid dressing whenever possible because if you get your pilot knocked out, you want to make sure that he's back in as quickly as possible. This consumable is even more important when you've got planes that have rear gunner and it puts in the rear gunner or the pilot. Um, and you know you lose a lot of accuracy when your pilot's knocked out. So typically you want that in there. Uh, but specifically for this plane, you don't really catch on fire all that often. There's really not a point to having the first aid, I mean the um, fire extinguisher kit on this particular plane. Um, yeah, so that's my little dealio on that. Again, with the speed, I've added engine cooling on here. My engine doesn't get knocked out all that often, so I don't need to do uh, manual engine restart. There's definitely a time and a place for a manual engine restart. This particular plane seems to hold up pretty well. Now that I've said that, I'm sure I'll get the engine knocked out all the time and set on fire. 
As far as additional consumables is concerned, once the plane is specialized, I will definitely be utilizing the um, improved, well, whatever it's called, but blue, improved, improved ballistics, improved fragmentation, something like that, that helps the damage of the outboard weapons, the rockets and bombs. It's, it's totally worth it on a plane where you use bombs and rockets quite a bit. Um, I keep universal ammunition on here. It's cost credits. I've got credits. Even if you've got a, um, if you don't have a premium account, universal ammo seems to be worth it. I tend to sell all of my um, premium ammo, which is why I'm only down to five. Um, I made a pretty penny. I think two million credits is what I made after I sold these after like a year. Um, so again, I'll use universal ammo, but it's up to you. I've seen people not use any ammo. I, I try to get every advantage that I can that's not like completely stupid. And so universal ammo fits in that requirement. As far as airframe is concerned, I probably will actually, once the consumable comes in, use pneumatic control assist just for those times that I really do want to turn a little bit more. Um, you really shouldn't be focused on the turning abilities of a P-47 or the XP-72 for that matter, but there will be times when you just need a little extra boost when it comes to turning. And so let's take a quick look at Mary here. Um, so this is a special pilot. Um, she was only available for a short amount of time via a package, and I was lucky enough to uh, get my hands on her. She's got some definitely special skill set here. Um, so instead of Engine Guru 1, she gets Eagle's, Eagle, Eagle's Wings, which increases the engine thrust by 2% and the boost duration by 10%. So the engine thrust by 2% is standard for Engine Guru, but this you also get a boost duration of 10% more which is incredibly helpful on a plane like this. So obviously she's got to go on an American plane. Her multi-rolls have quite a lot of boost already on them. So getting an additional 10% is even better. Um, and Valkyrie's Wrath. So Valkyrie's Wrath increases, it doubles the damage to ground targets when you are approaching the ground, basically when you're doing a dive bomb maneuver. You have to be um, exceeding 45 degrees angled down and approaching maximum dive speed, which I mean, I think that means being in the yellow. But um, sometimes you see this this symbol pop up. Sometimes you don't. It kind of is what it is. But getting the double damage to ground targets when you've got your bomber, when you've got your bombs and your rockets, is incredibly helpful. Especially since I also have demolition expert, which adds an additional 10% um, to the um, damage and blast radius of those bombs and rockets. That 10% plus an additional 10% once I get these planes specialized, 20% times two. So you know what I mean? Like it's, it's obviously has the ability with this pilot on this plane to really um, go above and beyond. I love Mary because I've put her into things like my P82. Um, right, can I, why am I showing tier nine? Um, it's just tier eight premium. Um, P82B here has a bunch of bombs and rockets as well. I'll put her into this particular plane, even though it's a heavy fighter. Um, and it'll do double, da double damage on the bombs and rockets here also. So really liking Mary. Glad that I um, was lucky enough to get her. And yeah. So the P47B. <sighs> In real life, it was, you know, it was top tier plane, right? Um, during World War II, um, especially in the Pacific, there was you know, not a, there was every engagement that the Americans had some sort of positive impact on, included the P-47s. Um, iconic plane, if you're American, for sure. Um, in the game, they're not an easy plane to play. You go from the P-47B to the XP-72 eventually, at tier eight, very very similar play style. Do I? I didn't put the bomb. I didn't put anything on this plane right now. I've just bought it back, and that's all I've done is bought it back. Um, the the plane the the play style itself is really about being a fast ground attacker. You've got a lot of engine power, and you have the ability to get from sector to sector very quickly. You want to focus on your, your air to ground ability because your guns kind of suck, which typically wouldn't be the worst thing. They're doable on the P-51 line. Same guns basically on these planes as on these planes. The difference is going to be these planes can't turn 
nobody really thinks that Mustangs can turn all that well. They turn okay, but these turn even worse. So the guns do such little damage that you're, you're not able to stick with an enemy for long enough to get that damage output to be significant. And so it can be frustrating. If the guns were heavy hitting, if these were like 20 or 30 millimeter cannons, and you only needed to get one or two shots, then it's not a big deal that your, your uh, maneuverability kind of sucks. It's why the FW-190s, in my opinion, are so good. The difference between the, the P-47s and these FW-190s is these planes here, uh, the guns make the difference. These are pretty hard-hitting guns. You've got 20 millimeter cannons up to 30 millimeter cannons here. So it doesn't really matter that you can't turn because all you need to do is get a couple good shots in and you win an engagement. You got basically the same maneuverability here, but because your guns put out such low volume of damage, um, you're just gonna, it can be very, very frustrating. That being said, focus on the speed, focus on your air to ground ability, and um, you know, take advantage of those air targets when you can. Especially at tier six, you'll have some flexibility. Um, but don't get frustrated if your air-to-air -air combat is lacking compared to some other planes. It's not really the P-47's forte in this game. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed the battle. Um, sorry that it took so long to get out to you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.